and he works with a company called Coherent Capital, and you may have seen him on the Twitter stream, at Coherent Capital is his uh, handle there. And Mark, appreciate you coming on from the Big Apple. Uh, speaking of Big Apple, how about Apple's earnings yesterday blowing it out? Now the oh largest co- largest company in the uh, U.S. markets, uh, as far as market cap, they, they overtook uh, Exxon, finally. Unbelievable story. And it just keeps, it's like the ever-ready bunny in service. It just keeps going and going and going. It does. You know, at some point yeah. in time, you, you, you hit what I would call the GE threshold, right? Right. It's, it's, there's only so much, so much double-digit growth you can have. Then you start to become big and lumbering. Yeah, you know, I, there's so much. What do they have? They, they added like another thirty-six billion in cash. I mean, I, I, it's astounding. It's, it's, I, it's astounding. I, I mean, it really it is. is. I don't, I don't throw that word around, but I don't know what you do with that kind of money. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's very hard to figure it out. But uh, as long as they can keep the the momentum going, you've got a, a tremendously pricey stock and. Uh, I mean, it's just, it just, it just doesn't stop. Right. right. Let me, you know, let me take, you know, it's up about 27 points right now. Yeah. C- coming close to the end of the day. I mean, it's at 447. You know, my, my good buddy, uh, Joe Donahue, who's the uh, upside trader. Yep. Um, who's just calls the tape as he sees it. I mean, he's been in the stock. He, Took off a bunch of positions at a tremendous profit and kept a quarter of his position going into earnings and just just killed it. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing, you know. And and one thing I want to talk and the reason why you and I want we've been trying to get together for a while. Uh, you're married to a Michigander, which is uh, one thing, you know. We have that in common. Um, but talking about liquidity and options. Uh, you know, obviously options in Apple are very uh, liquid, and there, there, it is not a problem finding a market on most strikes. But in the real world, and, and most of us are in the real world, even in stocks uh, that are big in size and market cap in the billions, most funds and most managers have a difficult time. I can speak as a, as, as a person that did this for, you know, eight years running a portfolio. It's difficult with market makers on the floor, off the floor, OTC, to find liquid markets for uh, spreading and, and, and hedging on uh, equities. And that's what Coherent Capital tries to help and assist with in the marketplace. So that's really the reason why I want to talk to you today. And if you can give us a little flavor, what Coherent does, because I think it's pretty interesting. And it's, uh, you know, it, 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 for a lot of people, um, just so they know, it, you know, a lot of people, like there's this company called Second Market. And Second Market is out there trying to uh, prolifer- proliferate uh, private companies that are due to go public. And they create a market for, uh, you know, the stock, even though it's not publicly traded. And they do that in a way that yeah. makes, you know, makes it. And it's not similar to... It sounds a little bit what you're trying to do here uh, with Coherent. And you've got a joint venture with Miller Tabak, which a lot of people are familiar with. Yeah, and Miller Tabak just as a brief, is a 30 year old institutional execution shop uh, formed by Jeff Miller and Jeff Tabak, who are still very active in the business. It's a very, very high quality firm, squeak and clean reputation, just known for its expertise in really getting best execution across the board. And while they do listed options, my background is coming from the, let's call it the OTC background, the, the bank equity derivatives business. I've run an equity derivatives business at a major bank, and I built an equity derivatives business for 10 years and sold it to a major European bank. And so that's the area that I have expertise that I focus on. And we noticed over the course of the last six months a real challenge that has always existed uh, with the listed options market can all of a sudden, if you do it right, can be overcome. And a lot of the challenges with the over-the-counter market can be overcome too. Let me kind of briefly set up the, pos- the positives and the negatives of the listed market and then contrast that with the OTC market and then tell you what we do. Because sure. that kind of puts it all in perspective. Perfect. Uh, the, the listed market is all about 
uh, the locals on the floor and the market makers on the floor where they can make money based on a relatively wide bid-ask spread, where unless you're dealing with the Apples of this world or the Eli Lillys of this world or the IBMs of this world or maybe the most highly liquid indexes or ETFs, where you have very deep optional liquidity and you have very tight bid ask spreads. If you want to do, um, uh, if you want to sell calls on a stock like Enbridge, which is a twenty-eight billion dollar market cap company uh, that trades which isn't, very, which very isn't a small company, which isn't a small company. Which, uh, I, I want to point that out. Not twenty-eight yeah. billion. Twenty-eight billion. Yeah. Billion dollars. Right. And the stock has a the stock has a one cent bid ask spread. But if you want to trade, let's call it the April at the money right now. Let me just let me just tell you what that price is on Enbridge. If you want to look at April at the money, which the close at the money is thirty five. You've got a thirty cent bid ask spread. Six contracts traded today, and it's got five hundred con five hundred and eight contracts that are are uh, open interest. You're so you've, got a, you, you've got a 10% wide spread, basically, on a you know listed stock that's uh, got a market cap of 38 billion, just to give some people some flavor. Right? It's huge. Exactly. And so, as a practical matter, if you want to come in and write 5,000 calls, good luck. Y- y- either good luck with that, yeah, <laughs> or you're going to get really reamed with the price. Right, so you're either not going to be able to do it, or you get really ringed with the price. Right. So the disadvantage of the listed market is that you've got wide bid ask spreads. In other words, it costs you a lot to execute, and your underlines, the number of underlines that have any kind of reasonable liquidity, is limited. Right. The advantage of the listed market is that if you are a, a trader or a portfolio manager, you go to a broker and you want to sell a bunch of contracts or buy a bunch of contracts, it may go down to the floor of an exchange, it may cross electronically, but nobody knows it's you. You have full anonymity of the transaction. The only one who knows it's you is your broker. And then the other advantage that the listed market has is that when the option clears, it clears and it settles in the options clearing corporation, which does all the margining work and valuation work, and then passes that off to your broker, who then addresses that specifically to you. So whoever you use, whether it's Fidelity, Schwab, uh, 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 Interactive Brokers, they'll take that feed from the OCC, Options Clearing Corp, and address that to you. Right. But you don't have to worry about whether the other side is going to make a payment if you're overpayment. You never worry about that with an OCC option. Compare and contrast that with the over-the-counter options market, which is the domain of the banks right. or the investment banks, whether it's Goldman Sachs or uh, any of the French banks or Morgan Stanley or UBS or Credit Suisse, whoever it is. These banks will make you markets in options, and they will do it on stocks like Enbridge, and they will do it on stocks as low as perhaps Barnes & Noble, which is a sub-$1 billion um, a stock. Yeah, they will do. A, they will make markets on lots of different underlines, but not until you come to them, and that's I think where you're going to take this. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you're a portfolio manager, and you go to three banks. You automatically telegraph to the bank exactly what your strategy is. Right. And many of them have these agreements um, of execution for OTC options that basically, with your foreknowledge, allows them to take positions in advance of executing your order. So it's effectively legalized front running. Right. So you've given up the anonymity. Sounds like, sounds like being a congressman. You know, except that, um, well, I guess it is. You can do it legally and make money at it. Yeah. <laughs> but Mark Twain once said... Yeah, Mark Twain once said, there's no Native American criminal class with the exception of Congress. <laughs> um, but Mark more Twain along the lines man. of, it really was. And so you've got a great price on a number of underlines on, um, on stocks that you couldn't do listed. So what's the problem with that? Well, the problem is you've given up your anonymity. Right. And the other big problem is that if you are a buyer of options you are taking the bank's counterparty risk. 
So, for example, Societe Generale may be the best price, but you may not want to take, you may be uncomfortable taking their credit risk right now. Right. Now, there's a lot of stories that would, would, a lot of people would tell you that you probably shouldn't be afraid. Right. But, and, and again, you know, these, these, are, these, these are liquidity concerns that you're talking about, Mark, that again, if you're clearing through an options clear the OCC, it's not an issue because you said, uh, like you said, it's, uh, but th- in, in this world, in the, in the portfolio management world, the liquidity becomes a big piece of how can I put the hedge on? How can I put the back spread on the spread? And how can I do it with liquidity? It's not just getting the trade done, but I have to be able to execute on the backside, as you're suggesting here, and not. That's correct. And, not, and I have to worry about, you said, the counterparty risk if they go out of business, if they fail. That's right. And by the way, they have to worry about your counterparty risk, too, if right. you sell an option to them. Right. And so as a result, the banks have a process where they, they actually make you sign and they sign an agreement called a, an ISDA agreement. It's a swap agreement. It's an internationally standardized agreement that winds up being anything but standardized and turns out to be the lawyer's full employment program. But as a practical matter, you then have to post collateral back and forth between you two, depending on whether you owe them money or they owe you money. Right. Administratively, it can be a burden. Yes. But at the at, but at the end of the day, you're taking their risk. And let's say you open a position with a bank, and you open a position, let's say, with uh, Bank A. And you want to close that position because of you either want to take a profit or you want to have a stop loss. So then you close that position. Well, 99 times out of 100, you're going to have to go right back to Bank A and close that position. Right. Okay? So, in other words, how do you really know you're getting best execution? Number one. Number two, you're still taking their risk. So what so, we do so, is... Yeah, tell us a little bit about what the partnership with miller Tabak is uh, okay. attempting to change that marketplace. I mean, it's, it's similar to, you know, let's say like a company called Market for Bonds. Uh, I'm sure that's right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Very much so. Um, the market is all about transparency for the customer, mm-hmm. and that's what we are. Well, if a customer comes into us, a portfolio manager, a trader comes into us and asks us to, to they want to sell five thousand calls of Enbridge, we'll go out to a half a dozen different banks who we know <clears throat> are good on resource stocks, and we will get a series of bids from those banks. And one of the things that that price discovery process um, um, shows you is that there is really no efficient market. Because at any bank, at any time, for any stock, at any strike, at any maturity, somebody will have an axe. It's true. Somebody somewhere. It's true. <laughs> As a result of that, we wind up finding anomalous pricing all the time. It's not unusual for us to generate, and I kid you not, and I could show you the, uh, I, I, I could show you the results in a, in a chart, but we could show you for a 45 day option a 200 basis point excess return. Yeah. Not unusual. And, and when you when you go through that analysis, Mark, for your clients, I mean, are, are you trying to provide uh, again uh, the counterparty risk associated uh, with with each price that you're able to that, determine? That, that is that is step two, Matt. Okay. Step one is finding the best price and the best liquidity. Step two is that once we find it, we then have aligned our systems here at Miller Tabat and with our bank partners so that we tell the banks to cross the order on the floor of the exchange, which takes about two seconds, okay. and put the trade up on the options clearing court. So then it's done, so, ele- so then it's done electronically and back to the OCC, so all counter risk is for both sides is taken away. That is correct. Beautiful. So you get the benefit. You get the benefit of the OTC pricing, but you get no counterparty risk on the settlement. Okay. And if you ever want to unwind the trade, you do not have to go back to the same bank that you bought it from in the first place. I could go. So you can go. I could go to the OTC, or I could go through you and do the same process with a different bank. That's correct. 
So Bank A provides you the best opening position. You wanted to sell 5,000 calls of Enbridge. You now want to, uh, two weeks later, you want to unwind that. You want to buy uh, 5,000 calls of Enbridge. Right. You go to Bank D. You tell Bank D what you want to do, and same strike, same maturity. And then you tell them to cross that in the OCC, too. From your prime broker's perspective, you are completely flat. From the Options Clearing Corp's perspective, they have two legs that will clear at maturity. Right. So, bottom line is, is that for anyone that does options, that wants to do options on single stocks, you can source type bid ask spreads, excess returns, and do it without counterparty risk. That's beautiful. And that's our business. So that's it's a relatively new business. So yeah, I was going to ask you, what type, you know, competition-wise, who's that, who else is out there? Who do you see out there as we close here, January 25th? Who's out there doing this type of work? You know, I used to use a number of Chicago-based uh, floor, you know, clearing firms to do this type of thing. But again, uh, you know, I was small. I was not trying to, you know, get the 5,000 uh, into an illiquid thing. So, but it was difficult. I still had to call down to the floor to try to, you know, try to get somewhere in between that widespread, as you're suggesting. So, with derivatives growing and with with you know risk growing, uh, it's got to be just a huge potential upside market. I mean, I've always said this. It's like, you know, why isn't there fully electronic options slash bonds like there is on the equities? There will be, and it'll, it'll come over the next decade, most likely, and it's already going that way. So, you know, this true liquidity is really what you're, you're after here in trying to create liquidity and, and counterparty risk. So, um, you know, tell us a little bit about the, the, the landscape and, and where you see this business going. Yeah, I, it's a great question, Matt. Right now, we're the only ones who are doing it because what we've had to do is align our capabilities with that of the banks and uh, have the banks work with the clearing corporation. We use J.P. Morgan to to clear our, our option trades. Okay. And we have to be able to generate the trades such that we can deliver them to any prime broker. So if a hedge fund uses J.P. Morgan as a prime broker, or if one uses Goldman Sachs, another uses Morgan Stanley, but quite often a hedge fund will use multiple prime brokers depending on the fund that they have. We've right. got to be able to split those orders in, in a way where it's recognized by the prime brokers. So that's one thing. We have to tell the banks to do that, too, and they have to align their systems to do it. Right. And so ultimately, I think it's going to happen as the... Um, Options Clearing Corp will allow the uh, electronic crossing of over-the-counter derivatives at, at some point in time in the future. What we do is kind of jerry-rigged it in, such that the orders that we do, we've actually done several orders that are multi-million dollars that will actually go through the trades and the process that is normal. They Each of them wind up with their own QCIP so that they fit within the construct of the existing valuation and uh, fund accounting systems. So that's what you have to really worry about is not just we can get you the best price, is what happens after that. Do you fit within the rubric of what the regulators want you to do? Yes. So it's not that it's a secret sauce or anything. Maybe it's a special sauce, but it's connecting dots in a way that nobody has done it before. And so that's what's unusual about it. And usually what occurs is that there is a healthy degree of skepticism at first, mm-hmm. and then there is a uh, it gives way to a sense of incredulity as people say, you tell me that I can generate uh, 100 basis points worth of excess return on a 45-day option. Right. And then it's curiosity, and then it becomes practice. Right. So that's that, that's kind of like the life cycle we go through when we get a when, when we get a customer. Yes. So and, and so, go ahead. So at, at the end is who's doing this now? Nobody's really doing this now. I expect it to be copied somewhere along the line. Right now we have a first mover advantage right. in the business per se, and so that's what we're trying to advance at this point in time. Well, I like it, Mark, and I, and I could see it being a valuable tool for anybody that, 
is in the portfolio biz. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, I would say give you a call and figure out how uh, coherent, excuse me, can service your needs in this regard. Um, because, you know, again, uh, risk spreading and, and, and liquidity are, are major issues today. So uh, I want to thank you for coming on and tell, telling me about it because, again, this is a service I definitely could have used. And I'm, I was a small fund manager, so I know – uh, myself and the larger guys out there definitely would have a, a need for this type of service. And, Happy to do it, Matt. And, and your number directly is 212-850-8120. And call Mark directly, please, and, and uh, you know, give it a shot. Give it a listen and see what they can do for you would be my suggestion because, uh, again, if you're – if you're in that spreading and hedging and liquidity is a piece of your biz, uh, I don't know how you can't look at something like this. So, Thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, Go Blue, you know, football's over. We had a great year uh, in Ann Arbor, and uh, we're, we're looking solid in uh, both basketball and hockey again. So, <laughs> Yeah. We even won a ball game. That's right. <laughs> All right, Mark. I'll catch you on the other side again at Coherent Capital on Twitter, and uh, appreciate you coming on today. My pleasure. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Hang on one second.